Please welcome the Congressman from Connecticut's 2nd District, the Honorable Joe Courtney. Good morning, and thank you uh, for the kind introduction, and congratulations to Kevin Graney, all the leadership and workers of Electric Boat, and your Navy partners for bringing us together for the first public submarine christening since the scourge of COVID descended in March of 2020. On March 20th, 2020, Governor Lamont, like all the governors across the country, in, pursu in pursuant to the national public health emergency, ordered a lockdown in the state of Connecticut. And only essential workers like healthcare workers, first responders, were, again, asked to stand the watch during this incredible crisis for our nation. The same day, the Department of Defense issued an order designating critical infrastructure for defense workers, such as those at Electric Boat, who, again, had to get up the next morning and be here to continue their work. It was hard. Assistant Secretary of the Navy, Jim Gertz, was kind of put in charge as the quarterback to track what shipyards and Navy installations were doing and was reporting in to the Sea Power Subcommittee on a regular basis. And it was, it was difficult for some of these uh, folks to stay open. Some of the smaller suppliers had to close because of high infection rates uh, and because of lack of PPE. Uh, but at every one of those briefings, which he gave to the Sea Power Subcommittee, it was clear that Electric Boat was staying ahead or at the top of the pack in terms of keeping uh, pace in terms of this incredible, unprecedented challenge. And to all the workers who figured out a way to try and deal with social distancing in a shipyard and social distancing in a submarine and how to deal with lack of PPE to keep focused and keep on track, in my opinion, is one of the most extraordinary successes of the 120-year history of this incredible shipyard. Thank you again for your great work. And similarly, up the river, Captain Thomas Moore and the 10,000 sailors, officers, and civilian partners at Groton Subbase did not miss a single day of deployments of its fleet of submarines, and as of last week, reported in a, a vaccination rate of over 80% of base personnel, a, a number that far exceeds national and state vaccination rates, as well as above the averages in the U.S. military as a whole. Thank you, Captain Moore, and the entire Groton submarine team for setting an example for the whole country about how we as a nation, using vaccines developed right up the road here at Pfizer, are going to crush this virus once and for all. As the congressman who proudly represents this region known as the submarine capital of the world, it's always an honor to welcome guests to this region, and again, Darlene, to you and, and Admiral Greenert, um, who I kind of calculated, combined together, it's about 80 years of investment in the U.S. Navy. Uh, much of it spent in, in Groton. It's kind of silly to, to welcome you here. Uh, but again, you know, I, I can't think of a, of a boat sponsor who will be more devoted to Captain Nemo and his crew and succeeding crews uh, than, than Darlene Greenert. And uh, again, congratulations on this great honor. And I also want to welcome one of my colleagues who's here today from Brownsville, Texas, Congressman Philemon Vela, who, um, even though he doesn't have a shipyard in his district, serves on the Sea Power Subcommittee, was an incredible staunch ally last year uh, in our efforts spearheading the restoration of the 10th boat to the Block 5 contract. And then a couple days ago, we reported out our, our Sea Power mark, as well as the Senate, uh, that maintains the two-year Virginia cadence, as well as full funding uh, of Columbia. For Phil, this is not about parochial home interest. It's about his commitment to our national defense and seeing the big picture. Again, thank you, Phil, Phil for being here today and for your strong, strong advocacy for our submarine force. Over Over the last 15 years, I've had the opportunity to hear a lot of Rickover stories from both active and retired submariners, which are the stuff of legend, and I look forward to hearing Admiral Caldwell's remarks, which, uh, recounting some of these, which I'm sure are some humorous but always inspiring. The parts of Rickover's story, though, that I find in some ways of the greatest interest is not just his work in the Navy, 
but rather his journey as an emigrant to our shores. He came to America at the age of six with his Polish Jewish family, fleeing political persecution from the Russian pogroms. He did not speak a word of English, yet as he noted in his writings later in life, America's education system provided the pathway to become one of the most brilliant nuclear engineers in America and the longest serving member in the history of the US Navy. Towards the end of his life, after 63 years of service, he continued to speak out in public on a number of issues, but it really wasn't about the Navy. It was about his passion for public education in books, essays, and testimony to Congress. In typical fashion, he bluntly warned the country, education is the most important problem facing the United States, and only massive upgrading of our scholastic standards of our schools will guarantee the future prosperity and freedom of the republic. He also described the goal of edu education, which is to teach young Americans how to think, not just to memorize. At a time when Electric Boat is growing its ranks of new shipbuilders, most of whom are Gen Zers and young millennials that are coming to our region to embark on an exciting career, his words still stand as a challenge. A challenge not just to build the best new submarines possible, but to build a system of education, job training, and inclusive opportunity that provides every young person the chance to find a rewarding career to support himself and herself and their family. I'm proud that this submarine represents that vision. As this submarine begins its journey towards commissioning and operational service, it will carry a, leg a legacy of innovation and hard work that Rickover so clearly embodied. Congratulations to all. Thank you.